Hi. In this video, we are going to see how we can do time series modeling using AutoML. Now, when we talk about time series, time series is nothing but simply a series of data point ordered in time. There are plenty of use cases out there for time series like sales forecasting, inventory planning, staffing. Uh, there's a preventive maintenance of machinery. Basically, a lot of machineries today come with IoT sensors installed and then it, it gives out data every second or every minute depending on the frequency you want. You can, you can understand like how the machine is going performing and whether it's going to fail in the next five minutes or 10 minutes. Similarly, IoT sensors are fit, fitted into a lot of edge devices today, which emits data continuously. And we can use time series analysis to find pattern in it. Now in time series, what we are doing is by using the date, historical data that we have, we, we want business to understand trends from the data and make a call on what might happen in the future, right? And when we talk about time series, there are a lot of factors that comes into play. There can be seasonality in data that uh, like, like when you talk about retail, uh, every festival season or every holiday season, the sales might go up suddenly and then become constant or during the weekend, the sales might peak and then become like uh, uh, predictable during the weekdays. So there are seasonality, there is trend, uh, that can be increasing trend or a decreasing trend. Uh, the data can be stationary or not stationary. A lot of factors come into play when you talk about time series modeling. In this video, I'm going to uh, talk about time series modeling in the context of AutoML. Maybe I'll have a separate video where I detail out various components of time series. So let's get started with this video. Now, uh, in order to do the time series modeling, I'm going to use a package called AutoTS. And I'm doing a pip install auto TS, which is nothing but auto time series. And I already installed it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to import some packages just to uh, visualize the data. Now, most of time series problem is nothing but data analysis problem. A lot of things can be solved with data analysis. Now, time series requires uh detailed analysis uh whether the data is continuously captured there are some missing data if there are missing data how you want to impute you cannot do a global average in time series data because the data might have some pattern maybe you want to uh, handle your missing value to some average moving averages or something like that right so you need to do a lot of data analysis uh, when it comes to time series data and that's why i have imported a uh, matplotlib package i have also imported auto ts as uh, at I have imported pandas to load the data and I have just, uh, just uh, set some matplotlib parameters so that I can see the visuals better, right? So that's what I'm importing over here. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to download an electricity consumption data. I will talk about the data set. Uh, so in the electricity consumption data, I have a date field and then I have other field like how much I am paying monthly. Uh, I will, I will uh, tell more details about the data when we uh, get that. So for just, just let's see when we import a data set directly in pandas, it's going to assign either object uh, data type or integer data type depending on uh, what it is seeing. But uh, I want the data type for date to be date time. The reason is most of the time series of model expects it to be a date time format. So in that format, what I'm doing is I'm creating a function uh, called like parse. And then I am, what I'm doing is in my pandas data frame, if you see, over here i am calling this function and i am telling my date is build date column right so what is going to happen is it's going to convert the uh, it's going to pass the date as uh, this format and internally pandas is going to set that as a date time format right so let me run this and uh, here you can have anything hour uh, time depending on your data set my data set is monthly so I am just having this format, but if you have hourly format or something like that, you can accordingly give your format over here. And then I am importing the data. The data set is in my GitHub repo. Uh, it's called electricity consumption.csv. And let me talk about what this data is. So actually this data is a real world data. So when I say real world data is, this is my own electricity consumption for the last few years. So how much am I consuming in electricity? Uh, that's what um, uh, this data set is. Uh, this is downloaded from my electricity consumption uh, portal. And what I'm going to predict is like, what is future bill amount going to be? So am I going to have a higher bill amount or a lower bill amount so that I can plan my finances accordingly? And that's the purpose of this particular uh, uh, video. And I'm going to use auto, uh, auto ML to do the time series modeling. So I have the bill date column. This is the monthly bill date. And uh, what is the usage uh, charge? How much uh, bill amount I am getting? Uh, the data is from 2016 to the current month, right? And then what is the billing days that particular data is accounted for? Uh, 
so sometimes bill may come in 30 days sometimes 31 days sometimes even 32 33 days right it depends on uh, the provider and then there is a on peak usage and off peak usage so uh, what happens like i have selected a plan called saver so uh, typically like there is an on peak and off peak so between 3 a.m to 8 p.m in the morning sorry 3 p.m to 8 p.m in the evening it's called a uh, uh, peak hours so if i use any electricity devices during those peak hours i will be charged uh, two to three times the bill the cost but if i use during off peak hours that is like from 8 p.m to the uh, to uh, 12 uh, uh, sorry 3 p.m right 8 p.m to 3 p.m then basically i am paying a minimum amount so basically i am adjusting i am paying uh, less compared to the normal uh, charge when it's off peak hour when it's on peak hour i am paying higher so i need to make sure i need to plan my electricity usage maximum usages if i am using some heavy electrical devices during the off peak hours so that's why you can see on peak charge and off peak charge there is a usage charge and there's a build amount right so basically build amount will contain taxes and everything as well Right, so this is the data set and as i said this is my electricity consumption data set right let me quickly do uh, the info on the data set to data type i just want to make sure my build date is date time and it is date time uh, the horn peak is hint and rest or off road uh, billing days is integer right let me quickly print the rows and columns the data set is not big because i have monthly data set and also i want to complete this with a shorter duration uh, but you can use a larger data set uh, i have the daily version of it as well uh, but I'm just using the monthly version. So there are like 53 rows and six columns in this and there are missing value uh, in this case and uh, basically like uh, what are the unique values is telling right build days might have a unique value otherwise the amount typically is a continuous number you may find less of unique value right and next what i'm going to do is i'm going to do analysis on the data set right so for that what i'm doing is i'm creating another data frame and i am setting the index as build date uh, because i am going to use build date as my column and do, going to do multiple analysis uh, let me quickly go with analysis and to modeling but i just want to show uh, how the data looks like right so let me see the output now now you can see build date is a index column and you have others as the normal uh, data column normal independent variables a bill amount is going to be what my dependent variable is going to be over let me plot it in a grid and uh, the easy okay i didn't run this so what i'm doing is i am taking the build amount column alone and then i am plotting it so if you see the build amount this is how my usage looks like if you typically see during the mid of the year the the my bill amount is high but during end of the year the bill amount is low and this is a similar pattern every month except for 2016. the reason for this pattern is uh i i stay in arizona uh, which is like completely west of uh, us and it's pretty hot it's a desert area uh in in summer it gets like around 120 uh, degrees right and uh, the ac will be continuously running and that's why my summer months are typically my bill is high but the winter month is pretty good uh, you can deal with less heat it's not like as cold as other places in the us so it's, it's typically like spring so you will have low usage during the winter month and again it peaks up during the uh, summer but only in 2016 i had lows usage during the summer the reason is i was on vacation i was not in house so typically uh, i had set my ac temperature to pretty high so there was low consumption so when you deal with time series data you need to account for all the scenarios a typical example is the coronavirus case now right if you see a lot of sales in a particular industry would have come down drastically and you may have a good number before the corona and maybe once we recover you will have a good number but intermediate you are going to see this dip how do you want to handle it that's one scenario sometimes when you are using sensors the sensors might have a lot of missing values in it uh, the sensors might have uh, gone uh, like uh, gone not working and not generating data at all so you need to account for all these things right uh, but in this case i'm not going to do anything the 2016 data because my current three four years is pretty good all right so i'm going to just go ahead as it is. and what i'm doing is i'm uh, just because it is like too much of uh, all the years coming into a single graph i am just picking only the 2019 uh, data frame and then i am going to uh, kind of visualize 2019 alone build amount so if you really see over here uh, uh you are jan feb march is pretty low uh you still it's cold you need a heater but not to a great extent right not as you consume ac in the summer 
in april it is completely spring you don't need at ac you don't need heater also and that's why the bill is pretty low and it peaks up really high during the uh, during the uh, summer month uh, basically the june to uh, september october is pretty bad uh, there's one more reason the september or october might be higher in my case is because it's a festival season uh, we have like indian festivals like diwali and uh, navratri and the lights are typically on throughout the day uh, you can see like the 20 days will five spike that's why i have like pretty high bill amount during that time uh, but it can be case with christmas or uh, other festival as well where we switch on the light throughout the night right and so the so that's what for one year is um now you can also check the bar chart if you want uh, to see like where, where which month i am paying more and you can see uh, the september month is pretty high for me and but at the same time like uh, uh, the before month august uh, and uh, uh, july and all is also high because of uh, summer now that we have uh, seen the data you can plot all the data together i have just plotting the billing amount but here i am using to just plot the amount all to the data all together and what i can see the build amount on peak off peak and billing days uh, leave the billing days around these three follows a pattern right even though it's a multi varied data even if i use the three data i am not going to see any much difference it's better off i am using just the build amount uh, because both have like same correlation right i said there's no point in using all the three variables over here all right so this is the plot now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a copy of it in a final data frame right that's what i'm doing over here i'm just taking the data frame making a copy of it let me visualize the first 10 rows uh, it's the same thing that plot. now uh, what i have also done is i have removed the index column is not required doing the modeling the index column i used only doing the visualization so let me go back to my normal uh, data frame and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, copy these columns into the final data frame i'm you are using the build date on peak off peak build amount and billing days almost all the columns but if you don't want some column this is the time you can drop it off but i'm going to keep everything i'm going to tell my auto ml to figure it out i'm taking the first 50 rows as uh, train and the next uh, another, another three rows are there as test right just to see how the model is forecasting and then uh, I'm just printing. So I have a train frame and test frame. I am setting what is my timestamp column. My timestamp column is build date. My data set is separated by comma. My target is build amount. All right. So that's what it is. Uh, so these three variables. And now I am coming to the uh, uh, the modeling part. So this is the only single line you need to use during the modeling. All right. You just use that auto time series. You are passing your train column. You are passing your timestamp column build date. You are passing your target build amount. And then you are telling your score type as RMSC. You can tell stay normalized RMSC as well. And then I'm telling I want to forecast for six periods in the future, right? And I'm telling my time interval is months. In case if you have dates, you give it date. I am telling it's like seasonality is true because typically you see like every year the pattern uh, comes same. So I have seasonal period as 12 in this case because it's month, it's 12, right? And I'm telling model type as best. Now what you can do is you model type as best will run multiple models. It will run Arima model. It will run seasonal Arima model. It will run Facebook profit. Uh, it will it will run a typical machine learning model as well, right? So it's going to run all the model and find the best model for you. But instead of that, you can also tell you want to run only Facebook profit or only Harima or only ML. You can uh, do that, right? So that's what I am doing. Let me run this. So now it's going to go and uh, run across this multiple uh, data set, give you all the graph on how it looks like. If you see like, okay, this is this is the forecast, this is the actuals, and this is the six weeks forecast, but it's still going to uh, go and uh, continue with um, other models. It's using PyFlex, which is another model, PyFlex package, which is another uh, modeling package for time series. It's running Arima, seasonal Arima. This is going to uh, take some time not 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 too long also it will be done because the data set is very small uh, remember if your data set is very it's giving all the metrics as well uh, you can go and see the metrics of each and everything and manually take a call as well now if your data set is very big right then seasonal arima or arima might be very very slow uh, so you may want to test it with a small data set and then run it with the all the data set. Uh, you may want to configure only the ml and profit model which are pretty fast on your uh, your time your large data set right so depending on that you may want to fine tune the uh, parameters that i am passing to the auto time series model so this is kind of running for all the uh, different uh, models um, 
let's uh, kind of uh, give it some more time to complete and one more thing if you remember what i said uh, time series problem is a pure data analysis problem a lot of problem can be solved with proper data analysis uh, because if you take a machine right it may generate data year long but the machine may not break at all so may, you may have only one pattern over there you may not have all the pattern so you may want to and you may see highly imbalance right the errors may be very minimal you can also use time series forecasting for your applications as well like if you have any jvm based application or a database application you want to see a pattern where when there is a failure in the application is there like jvm memory goes too much high or kind of network uh, uh, dropouts are pretty high so you can do for a lot of other scenarios as well time series modeling now it has run uh, it has completed you can see all all the graphs you see your uh, basically acf plot and uh, partial acf plot over here so it gives you pretty good information of all the thing you can go and visualize it but it selected the profit model as the best model and it has given you the complete for data and the last phi is going to be the forecast in this right uh, let let's go only pick the uh, profit details from the ml dictionary which is the output i have assigned to and you can see the output let me quickly see uh, the uh, test data right i want to compare I have, I have test data where i have three uh, future periods which i have kept separately but i am predicting for six features uh, see when i say six it's going to give you five forecast right so these are the uh, five forecast one two three four five one thirty eight one forty eight and one fifty seven and these are the actual if you see build amount is 170 it predicted 138 uh, this is 94 it predicted 148 this is 135 it predicted 157 the second one was little far off uh, but the third one and first one was uh, pretty close now one thing i want to do is i uh, this does not give you the confidence interval right uh, so for that what i have done is i have run the profit model separately and then i have taken the output from it so this, this is what is the output now if you see the profit model okay so so the profit model let me let me do one thing let me quickly run the profit model and come to this just one minute yeah so this profit model should run in no time yeah once this is done i will run this again so you can see the confidence now you can see the confidence interval as well so even though it's predicted 138 148 157 so similar to the top model now you can see what is the uh, bucket so the lower can be 86 and higher can be 187 the lower can be 97 and 197 and if you see 94 is towards the lower bucket and similarly a lower and higher so you are using the confidence interval as well uh, in the output uh, i think the auto ds needs a slight update uh, to have the confidence interval built in but apart from that you see a pretty good model and my data set was not huge maybe if you have better data set and everything it may give you even closer uh, predictions so uh, that that's about uh, this video just want to quickly walk through how you can do time series analysis using auto ml thank you